Well, let me go on and get started. Hey, Joel, okay. how are you? And I guess Fred is there, but Fred is showing us a big grinning picture of himself. Um, so yeah, let me show you, uh, let me go over here. I'm, I've, got, I've got some stuff up on this other computer um, just to make life a little bit easier. Uh, let me launch Safari and go. So what you wanna do is go to black, blackmagicdesign.com. And let me share this screen. So now theoretically you're all seeing my other computer, which I've logged in on a separate account. Um, so you go to Black Magic Design and then go to products right here. And then what you have to do is say learn more, which is where it's buried. And when you do that, notice there's a download here. And the other thing is if you don't happen to see that, if you scrolled all the way to the bottom of the screen, which is where that little button would take you after they show you all the stuff they do. And this is why they give it to you for free. They want to get filmmakers in early. It's got a good reputation. New filmmakers don't have a lot of money and they figured, yeah, we'll catch them when they're starting out and get them hooked on our products. And there is the download now free at the bottom. And so you just download the free version. And when you, when you do that, it's going to say, do you want Mac OS, Windows, or Linux? So I'll, I will leave that up for uh, a bit. But again, here, if there's anybody late arriving, we're on the Black Magic Design site. You click this. You say, learn more. And right there, that'll just take you right to this window. Uh, and you want the... Uh, you want the DaVinci Resolve 16, not the studio. Uh, a lot of the stuff in the studio is very cool, but you really don't need it. And if you decide you're in love with it, it's $300 once. So not bad. Um, so I'm going to jump over to an open project that I did yesterday, uh, creating that video. And what I did today is I actually added another part, uh, a base part. And what I want to do is uh, go through the interface a little bit, and then we're going to construct this video or some version of it again from scratch because I added a second overdub um, or an overdub of me playing bass, another piece of video. And that's one of the things that's so great about um, having the ability to do something like this, particularly if you're also working with a separate audio program. It's not absolutely essential, but if you really want to present yourself in the best light, um, having really good sound is just as important as having watchable video. In fact, in my, my way of thinking, it's possibly even more important. Uh, so before we even do that, I'm going to show you what I did with sound. I recorded I recorded that song yesterday into a brand new program that is also free for people using uh, any universal audio interface. It's called Luna. Um, and I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I'm not suggesting you run and get that uh, unless you have a universal audio interface, in which case uh, it will save you a lot of hassle. So let me do the share screen again. We're going to take a look at my Pro Tools session. So where did this come from? Because I recorded it on my laptop on Luna. Uh, it was very easy. When I was done recording it in Luna, I exported the individual tracks uh, and uh, to a hard drive. I actually I didn't even put them on a hard drive. I just sent them by AirDrop down to my studio computer and dragged them into a Pro Tools session. I had the green track, which was the, uh, the uh, guitar, and the red track, which is uh, vocal. And then today I added a bass track. I said, I guess that makes so me So one of the things that's interesting about this is you. I recorded that guitar direct. Look how little of that guitar came out in that directional vocal mic. I purposely used I woke a up Sunday mic. morning. 
with good, uh, you know, with a pattern that was good at rejection because I wanted to keep my guitar out of it. And so I could have had a second microphone on the guitar and maybe gotten a better guitar sound, but I was happy with it. And the one advantage of doing that is I could actually go in here and overdub a word if I really screwed it up. What I did is I relied on my old friend here, Melodyne, which uh, I am not a singer. When people say, are you a singer songwriter? It's go, no, I'm a songwriter singer. <laughs> you know? And uh, hopefully the songwriting is better than singing because I know the singing requires a lot of effort. But I can go in here and go. I can put myself anywhere. And, you know, without it, it was fine, but I felt like I've got the ability to do it. So why not, why not, you know, fix the ones that are like, oh, that's not good. And my bass playing is absolutely horrendous. Um, it would have been better if I'd played the song originally to a click, but I was basically trying to match a performance. So the nice thing about bass is you can go in here and chop it all up and just move it uh, line it up with the guitar track. Uh, there's a place where I flubbed a, uh, a guitar note. Uh, just my thumb pick hit the wrong string. I just kept going and I just copied and pasted it from someplace else. And you know, and you end up with a fairly. Spent last night half sleeping in my car. So there you go. So if you've got the ability to record separately when you make these videos, it's really worth it. And I, I completely finished, bounced the audio, and then we're gonna go over here to Resolve and I'll show you kind of what, what's going on there. Um, let me stop this share. Stop me if you have any questions, I, I, I can blab. Um, hi, there's more of you now, hi, all of you. I just saw my screen. All right, other than it seems a little loud. Well, here's one reason it's a little loud is all the audio from all the video tracks is playing. So um, you have to take your mix track and you've got a solo that's, so once you've lined it up, so you're only hearing one track. Okay, so how did we get here? Before we start that, let me just show you a little bit around it. When you open this program, it's got seven tabs across the bottom, which immediately probably makes your head want to explode. Um, there's a new one here called Cut, and I've not explored it yet, but apparently it's a way of kind of working more quickly, and it was primarily designed for people in news. Um, I, I looked at it a little bit, and, and uh, I went back to the – so in before version 16, this cut tab was not there. This is brand new. There's an edit tab. There's a media tab. And we're going to start with that because I need to bring in a track, a couple of tracks that were not there because um, I added a bass part this morning, uh, both audio from Pro Tools and a video part. So that's simple enough. You go up to file, import file, import media. Uh, it is coming up on a folder. Um, let, me, let me jump back. One thing, this is, uh, I want to go through this quickly, but one thing about this program is it saves all the projects in a database. And you can create as many databases as you want, or you can keep working out of the same database forever. But you're not going to see a file on your computer that looks like a Pro Tools file or a Logic file. Um, you only see them when you open the program. Um, however, your media is your media. It's your video files, your audio files. So I've gotten in the habit. I have a folder on a separate drive on my laptop. It's called videos. Whenever I begin a project, I name, I create a folder for that project. I name it that. I put all the media in there. So that's what you're looking at here. That's this, that's this folder. It's in video projects. And we're going to go to that. And right yeah. now I've got, here are the files that I've got in there. I've got a, uh, um, I've got two files 
that are from uh, a Sony camera. And this MOV file is from uh, uh, an iPhone. And I've got the original version yesterday of the video of the audio. And then I did a version two today where I mixed in the bass. And we need, so we need to add that file and that file, which is the audio with the bass mixed in and the new video file. So we're going to add that to our media. Here's our media listed here. You can look at it this way, or you can look at it like that. Yeah, Carl? Carl, are you waving at me? No. Okay. So anyway, this is where all your media is. Um, if you've got a really huge project like I did with the um, with the project um, of, of the weight, I knew I was going to have trouble playing that on my computer. This is going to play fine. It's only a few tracks. But what you can do is highlight all the media, control click, and you will get something that says generate optimized media. And what that does is it it creates smaller files of what you've got there without the resolution, but it's enough for you to see it in the program. Uh, and when you're done with the project, you need to delete it, or you're just going to have all these extra files on your drive that take up a lot of space. Um, but I didn't bother to do that for this one because I didn't have that much. Now, once you've got the optimized media, you can say use it if it's available. You can delete it. You can say, how should I use it? If say you're, you're using the optimized media and it still doesn't play, then you can go to half resolution or quarter resolution. So there are ways if you've got a less powerful computer to still get this to happen. And at the end, it will go back to the original files and process a finished, a finished video using the highest quality files available. Um, this is simply just so you can play what's going on. So you can see your files here, but you don't spend a lot of time in the media tab. Most of your time is spent in the edit tab and possibly in the color tab. So here we are in the edit tab. I'm gonna show you how we get here. I'm gonna recreate this on another timeline, but we've got one, two, three tracks of video right now. One of them is the only thing on that track is a title. It was that title that you saw. And notice the title's kind of not doing all that much. Be well, actually it is now because it rendered. Sometimes when you add these things in, they don't work very well for a second. Looking at the sections now, we're on the, um, we're on the edit page. And there's a lot of windows open and it's really confusing. But here's the media again. Uh, we're going to need that in a minute. Here's the effects library, which we don't need at the moment. But see, you can close these things up and just get a simpler screen. So there's the inspector. So you, you can clean this up so you're not looking at so many things. But the fact is, you end up using the inspector a lot. And you don't need the media pool once you've pulled your media in. And the main focus here is your viewer here. You can do a little bit of resizing here, you know, if you want to, to show more or less. You can get the audio in the picture more when you're lining things up and then out of the picture as you, this, you know, as you got everything involved in there. This is important. This is called snap. It's like a little magnet and it's going to kind of pop you to markers and endpoints and stuff. Um, it's good for lining up things. Sometimes though, it's a pain in the butt because you're trying to get, like if you just wanted to be there, you know, so you can turn that off and on. And the can other thing cues? here is, is link. Can you mark what, cues? Are you allowed to put mark like a little index? Yeah, just, you just the, hit M. The timeline? So if I'm, in a, if I'm in a clip, these are clips. If yeah. I hit a clip and I hit the letter M, the marker shows up in the clip. You see it? There's a yeah. little blue thing. That's if great. I'm not on any marker, then the M will show up in the timeline. 
Yep, you can just create them. Yeah, and you can again, you can can you can double click them. Uh, you got to get the yeah playhead. The red thing's called the playhead, but you can remove the marker. You can change the color of the marker. Uh, and yeah, I use markers frequently to kind of keep things lined up. What I'm saying is, you said what, that 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 pointer when you were sliding across to a marker, does it like snap to it, kind of on your mouse or something? And I'm just curious. yes, yes. If you've That's got cool. If you've got the magnet on. Nice. Otherwise, it just can see how I'm just kind of going back right. and forth and it's not doing anything. As soon as I turn that on, boom. So I'm going to show you from the beginning how I put this together. Okay, there's only three elements in it so far. We're going to add two more. So I'm going to create a new timeline um, and basically do the same thing over. When you played audio before, when you got into DaVinci originally, we couldn't hear it. I think you probably, well, that, that may have something to do with Zoom. Let me see what happens if I do it now. I'm going to create a second timeline uh, right now. I'm going to put in four video tracks and four audio tracks, stereo, empty timeline. And there it is. And it's like, what happened to my other one? If I wanted to see them both, you see where I'm hovering here above the numbers? You can go in here and you can pick a different option that puts it in tabs. So if I do that, now I've got a tab for timeline one, tab for timeline two. So here we are, we've imported all of our video and audio, everything that we want on it. So let's get it on there. Now I go about, doing this in an order that makes some sense to me. The first thing I, I, I do is I put in the separate audio track. That's what I put in the, in the first audio slot. Uh, I am not sure which of these is the newest one, probably this one. Um, nope. So I dragged it on a timeline. It's not the one I want. I can see it's one, one month crazier porch. That's, that's the one from yesterday, so I want this one. So I'm gonna bring this in and just put it somewhere, anywhere. Now I'm gonna bring in the video tracks. So I think the one I will probably end up using the least is the bass track. So since I'm gonna use it the least, I'm gonna bring it in next. And I'm gonna put that on video two because if I put it on video one, it's going to overwrite the one the audio I just I just had there. Uh, I can't show you the shortcut keys I'm using, but this is an important one. If you're on a Mac, Command plus and minus up in the the uh, the top, the one through zero across the top where you do the plus and minus, that expands and shrinks the timeline view, and that's a good one to know. There's only a few shortcuts here that I use regularly. Um, so let's look at that. There's the bass. I played the bass track. Uh, we can make this a little bigger if we want to, but it doesn't matter. But it's like, how am I gonna line this up now? Well, one thing is it's pretty easy to see where it started, but if I wanna make it bigger, I can increase the volume of the bass <laughs> track. And so, I started playing it a little bit late. So what I'm gonna do is go down to the end here because I did finish it in time. Um, although I didn't quite nail the end, I know I actually moved it. But I can sort of see the peaks and valleys. And up at the beginning here, I can tell I'm running into the beginning. So I need to take the whole thing here, grab them and just move it a little more this way, give myself a little more room to work with. And looks like that was the first note I hit. So I can trim this off. I've got them all highlighted. I'm just gonna trim this one. So I'm gonna take this and notice that the video is moving with it because I've got this on. If I didn't have that on, you could move the video separately. I'm gonna undo that with commands Z and go on and keep them linked together because I don't want the video to get off from the audio. And I'm going to move that. Ah, 
notice, yeah, there we go. When you link them back together, you still have to select, reselect it. So now they're both selected. When I, the thing that tipped me off is when I saw that red plus and minus, it was telling me you're offsetting your audio from your video by this amount. So there's the first base note I hit. Let's assume I nailed it. Looks like it's right. I can always fix it later if it doesn't look right. And as I say, frequently the easiest way to line stuff up is go to the end of your song because often you have false starts and stuff. And it looks like I'm pretty good there. I happen to know that I hit the last notes early and I moved it in Pro Tools to line up with my guitar, which is why those don't, don't finish together. But I don't have to fix that here unless for some reason I want to show that video at the end, which I'm not going to do. So it makes no difference. So now I've got that lined up. Now I've got two more cameras I need to do the same thing with. So I'm going to bring in the camera from the iPhone, which by the way, if you're kind of like, well, how do I get this video from my iPhone to my computer? That's a real good place to use AirDrop. So again, we're going to take a look at the audio here. I'm not paying much attention at all to the video because I'm just looking at waveforms. Now here I did actually do a clap. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is bring in the other camera now too and see if I can get those two lined up together at the same time. So, and here's the one that I featured the most. So now I've got three tracks of audio, a video rather. The two top ones still aren't lined up with anything. We need to get that to happen. Notice, by the way, sometimes the sound seems to disappear. I don't know why. I think it's a bug in the program. It's there and then it isn't. So if you hit the volume line on it, you can often get it to come back. And also for lining these up, again, these cameras were across the room, so the audio is not very loud. So I'm pumping this up so I can see things better. So it looks to me like I got a couple of claps right here that I should, I should try to stick these two together. And yeah, so that looks, that looks pretty solid. And I'm going to blow that way up so I get it as lined up as I possibly can. Where'd that clap go? There it is. But now I still have to get these two tracks lined up with the two I've already done. So again, how do I get in the ballpark on these? Because I don't have any claps on the bass track. That wouldn't have helped me. Looks like, I, looks like, and also keep in mind, I had to go start these cameras. So if we start looking now, like what went on here? You know, there was nothing. I was across the room starting the camera. I had to come in, I had to sit down, I had to get stuff going. You know, I tuned my guitar, I, you know, all kinds of stuff. So again, your friend is kind of the end of the song. I'm looking here going, yeah, that's where the song ended. So let me just line up the end of the song of these two. So I'm going to grab them both. So they stay together now because I just spent time doing it. And again, I can't go any further. I ran into the beginning of the session over here. So at this point, it's fine. I don't need all this. I can move these in so I can keep moving these two. And looks like we're getting there. Hey, how many video layers will DaVinci's Resolve let you work with? Or as many as your computer. I don't think there's a limit. You can add as many tracks as you want. Uh, yes. If you want to add tracks, you go to a track that's there and, and um, control click and say add track nice. or add tracks. If you hit add tracks, it's going to say, what do you want? How many tracks? Where do you want them? Do you want them below the tracks you've already got or above the tracks you've already got? If you say you want them below, it will actually renumber them for you. Hmm. Um, so you can just keep adding tracks as you need to, and you can delete tracks you don't need. 
So again, I'm still trying to line this up here. And I still need to basically get rid of that beginning here. And I can see where the song kind of starts over here. So I'm going to do that again. And again, I'm going to grab these two. Notice I'm not looking at the video. I'm just looking at the audio. There is a feature in here if you've got multiple cameras that have good sound that will do this for you. But I find it really doesn't work very well. Uh, it's real hit and miss. And I've found that I do better doing it this way. Another thing is that you can only move a frame at a time. So sometimes you can't line up things exactly the way you want. Um, I'm gonna solo these because I wanna see where I'm at now in this song. All right, so I just soloed it. You couldn't hear it, but there's my last chord right there. So I know that's kind of in the ballpark right there but it's still off and I'm gonna to have to look at it a little bit. So now let's test it out. I'll just sync it and see what's going on. Gonna... All right, so that's terrible. It's not synced up at all. And here's looks like the beginning. So that's probably why. So again, I'm going to do that. And do you see where I'm, how I'm just looking at those? That looks pretty good. Okay, that's synced up. You have to trust me on it, you can't hear it. But, and I'm gonna actually look at the other one. These little things are what turns on the uh, turns off tracks. So if you want to see this track, you have to turn this one off. Again, I want to just see what that was. Yeah, that looks good. By the way, there's a little shortcut here that when you have a lot of tracks is good to know. If you hold down the option key while you click this, did you see what happened? It soloed that track because sometimes the one you want to see is down here, in which case you have to turn off everything above it. And if you've got 10 tracks, that's a pain in the ass. And I want to see if I come in on the bass. Good, all right. So I'm happy now. We've got, we've got everything in here we need to now edit this video. So where do I begin? I got to decide what's my first shot going to be. Is my first shot going to be that? Or is my first shot going to be that? Probably not going to be the bass. I know that because I don't even start playing bass for a while. So let's say my first shot's going to be here. I'm going to look at this and I want to wait. I don't need this. Don't care about seeing me doing all this stuff. <laughs> okay. This is, I'm gonna stop for, all right, so that's where I started. So that's where I'm gonna kind of start. Notice this is dark. Um, this is another place where Da Vinci is really great. We're gonna go over here to the color tab. Color tab's got all the play things you can do to do color. It's got, um, uh, this is called a parade. I don't know why, but notice that the blue is a little less than the red and it's not good. And so you could sit here and start pulling these things around. You say, it's too dark, I need more gain. So you can turn up the gain and notice that I'm filling more of what's going on there and brightened it up. So you can do that, but there also there's a wonderful feature called A. And if you click A, it just kind of picks a setting that it thinks it's right. Now, if you've got some white in you, this thing that you know is white, you can grab this little tool over here and go click it and say, hey, this is white. That piece of paper right there is white. Click that and it'll color balance it that way. 
Now I was using mixed light. I was using outdoor light from the windows along with incandescent light in the house. So that always makes things kind of tricky. But for purposes of showing you how this works, let's just hit the letter A. This is called a node. You can add nodes. Um, we're not gonna do it for this one, but I'm gonna show you what you could do if you wanted to. Uh, I come over here, I hit this line, I hit, uh, I think Command S, no, Option S, and add another node. And if I wanted to, I could do something really crazy with that. I could go over here to my LUTs, which stands for lookup table, click that, and I've got a bunch of LUTs that, and I could say, hmm, kind of like that film look or whatever. And if I saw one I liked, I could come over here and drag it on here and go, wow, I, I like that look, that really blown out look. And now I've just changed it. Now, if I don't want to do it, I can delete the node. I can turn off the node, go back to my original color. So I'm going to leave that. I'm going to go, yeah, let's see. Let's make one that kind of looks a little more arty. Um, Do these edits and, render back to your source material? They will when you they will when you render the whole project. That's that's going to be down here in deliver. That's the deliver tab. When it's time to be all done, that's where you go to create the output file. But if we go back to the color file, so while I'm here, before I start cutting up this pieces, and then I'm going to have to do this for every one. I want to do my color correction before I start editing because then I only have to edit each clip once instead of each time. So you can come over here and turn off the top line. And now I'm looking at that one. And if I want to, let's try the A on that. So notice these lines went to there. Uh, it's showing me my clips here. I could turn that off if I wanted to. Uh, by the way, if that does, if this does not show up for you, it's up here, it's timeline. Okay, so I turned off that and now I'm on this and I'm just gonna hit the A and see what happens. And uh, still a little dark, so I'm gonna turn up the gain on this. Uh, or I could, again, I could either add this lookup table to this node or I can just add another node. And the reason you want to add other nodes is because it's easier, it's easier to turn them off and on if you do that. So I'm going to add another node. I'm going to again do this. I'm going to take this and drop it on there. And uh, it's kind of what we got. And actually it didn't work. Okay, I double clicked it. You know what? That looks really bad on that one. So I'm going to turn that off again and see if I can just brighten this up manually. Just get it a little brighter. Uh, the iPhone was tricked by the backlighting over here. Um, and again, if it's too some color, you can go crazy here making it, you know, move this around. Um, there are four of these and, and you can look up things to see what these four things lift gamma gain and offset mean i'm not going to try to explain that now but notice when i turn up the lift at the bottom of my parade up actually these changes i'm making are on the wrong node nothing is happening you've got to be on the node you're working on okay i'm going to brighten this up and notice wow. that the parade brightens up some and that if i hit the lift i bring up the shadows some so that looks pretty good to me. Uh, and then the third one was in the studio, which was all under studio lighting. I've got LED lighting down there. Uh, and actually looks pretty good just as it is because I've got my camera set for the studio. But there, there is a little bit brighter. That's okay. Um, and maybe I'm a little too red, so I pull this a little towards the blue. Yeah, that looks about right. Okay, so now we're going to go back to the edit thing. Now we're ready to start actually working on the video. So it took that long. <laughs> it took that long just to get all this stuff in here and set up. But you get faster at it. Um, 
So where do I want this to start? I want it to start just before I come in. Started my computer, I'm recording. So let's say I want to start right there. So I'm going to drag this over to that point. I'm going to get this one underneath out of the way because if I put a fade in there, this is the fade in. The other way you could do fade ins is click the effects library. Uh, let's close the media tab. I don't need it anymore. And there's all these kind of, there's all kinds of effects you can add, all kinds of transitions. But the really, I just tend to use regular cross dissolves or, or just use the dissolves at the beginning and end of the tab. So notice if I do this, watch, we're going to, okay. So if that's my beginning, that's great, but it's weird because it's fading in over this. So what do I have to do is I got to get that out of the way. So there's nothing below it so that all I see is black. And now I hit it. Now, let's say that I decided, everybody still with me? Anybody got questions up to this point? Are you recording this Zoom meeting? Yes. Good. Good. So I, I decided to... I'm going to just run this clip till I start singing. Now, important shortcuts, two of them, A key and the B key. B is for blade. If I hit the B key, notice my tool will change to this razor blade. If I hit the A key, it goes back to kind of the multi-selector that lets you grab the ends and, you know, and, and kind of just move around normally. So I need the blade. I'm going to cut it right there where my playhead is. And now go back to the A key. And what I'm going to do is move this out of the way. Because here's what I want to do. I want to have this fade into into the other one. Now I could let that be a, a, a cut, a, a cut as opposed to a fade, or if I want to put a fade on that, I can fade that like that. Now, a couple of issues here. Let's go back to this clip. First of all, I don't think that's a great opening shot that way, but this is 4K video and you can zoom it quite a bit. So now we're going to go up here to our inspector tab. By the way, the other thing you can do is if you've got a slower computer right here, you can turn off all the color corrections we did, all the effects and color correction. It will save you some processing. Um, depends on how fancy your color corrections are and how many nodes you've got. But for a simple color correction, it won't make that much difference. I think what the first shot should be is come over here to zoom. Notice the X and Y axis are linked together on the zoom. The opacity is 100%, which is what I want in this case, except for the fades at the end. But I'd like to make this bigger. So I'm hovering over the box, the Y box, and notice they're going together and they get bigger and smaller. And I go, well, let's start like that, except my guitar's off the screen. So I go down to the X, Y axis for position. That was zoom. This is position. And I can go until, whoop, ran out of screen. See how we, we're now showing the other shots. So I got to stop there. So now I'm going to let this be my opening shot. I spent last night half sleeping in my car. So I like that opening shot better. And I'm going to go run this one until I want to change again. Another Hollywood night in the life of this big old traveling star. All right, that's enough of that. Now let's bring back the first shot. So do you see what I'm doing? Now, I could do this a different way. I'm going to show you an alternate way to do it because for some people, they don't want to work with all these. But I think there's an advantage to keeping all of these tracks active. 
If I wanted to, I could have changed to this one by blading it here and blading it here, which would happen automatically without me moving it because of the magnet being on. Go back to the A, taking this and simply holding down option and copying that piece up there. So you could end up, and there are reasons sometimes where I end up with everything down below, but one top timeline. And I use things like cross fades. And in case you do that, then you would grab your fade like over here and drag it right to that point. And that would put a cross fade there. A truck stop. So you've got an alternate way of doing it, but I honestly think this is simpler to kind of keep these tracks this way. Um, okay, so now we've done that. Uh, we're gonna go. A truck stop shower. Now notice this one is enlarged. This one is still small. And that again is why I kind of like working with the tracks this way because I decide what I'm gonna do with each piece. So when we came back to this one, a truck stop shower is gonna have to do again. I'm gonna get through the end of the first verse and then and then I'm gonna show you some things. Okay, now my bass is gonna come in. So let's hit B for blade. Go back to A, get this out of the way. Let's also blade this one, which I should have done at the same time. Get that out of the way. And whoa, there's my bass track at the top of my balding head. Okay. Three months on the road and each one seems longer than the last. All right. I don't need much of that. Um, I just wanted to kind of indicate that an instrument came in. And that's one thing that's so great about this is those of you that can play multiple instruments or want to sing harmony with yourself, you can go on and create as many tracks as you want, create a whole band for yourself. You can also send this to a lot of people. Uh, you know, if, instead of me playing my crappy bass part and moving it all over to make it work, I could have sent this whole thing to Craig Aiken and he just sent me back a fantastic bass part with video. And that's exactly what we did for the uh, weight. Uh, so if you want to start collaborating with people rather than try to figure out how to play all at the same time online, which is a daunting proposition, uh, this is another way to do it. Send somebody a song, say, Hey, give me a piano part and you'll know how to add it in. Um, so again, I'm going to do a little fade there, but if I don't do something with the track below it, watch what happens. See, that's not good. So what I got to do is get that out of the way. Just move it out of the way. So that, again, it goes right to the track I want. Three months on the road and each one seems longer than the last. Okay. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you some one other thing uh, about the clips. And then I want to show you titling. So let's go back to this first clip. In addition to having the ability to zoom these and also to move them position wise, you also can create something called keyframes. You may have heard of that. What keyframes do is allow you to go from point A to point B with, with moves. So I'm going to keyframe this right at right where it is now by hitting this little diamond here and here. And then I'm going to go a little later in the clip and I'm going to zoom out slightly. I'm going to make this clip smaller. Actually, let's go, let's go in on it. And I'm going to move it up. I'm going to move it larger and I'm going to move it up even more now because as you make it bigger, the bottom, there's more bottom. So now I've got keyframe in two different places. And watch what happens when I do this. A 
spent last night half sleeping. Okay. Now, I probably means I want to come in before I do that, uh, start singing because that looked weird. I spent last night half sleep. Okay, that works okay. Now I'm going to show you a way to refine this. Go to the clip, make it large enough to see the clip spread out. Again, that's command plus and minus up at the the top where the numbers are. Highlight it. You need the clip highlighted. And then click this little button that looks like a diamond, another keyframe button. And it's like, and there are the keyframes I added. Remember, I wasn't very particular about where I put them. Well, in this case, what I really want to do is I want the movement to start as soon as the clip starts. And I want it to end as soon as the clip ends. So now let me watch it. So it was moving right off the bat. Here's one more refinement. Just to the left of the little diamond, I don't know what that is, but it's showing you your actual keyframes. And if you highlight it, turned red, instead of it being linear, you can make it uh, exponential. And what that means is you can actually change the speed of it sort of ramping up and go hit the one at the end and make it a ramp slowdown. And now watch what happens to it. It sort of subtly starts moving and speeds up and then slows down at the end. I spent last night half Any questions? Is anybody even still there? Because I haven't heard anybody. I'm here. Yes, yes. Watching. Okay. So I, I'm sure some of this stuff doesn't make sense, but when you start doing it, hopefully you'll either go back to this or you'll at least know a bit of the concept. Um, so now let's go to my next clip. My next clip is me sitting there, and it runs until, where does it go? And it comes back. Yeah, let's see. If you want to close these windows too, you, you can do that uh, by clicking them again, just so you can get back to seeing it. Again, I don't need the effects library, so that'll give me a little bit more screen space if I close that up right now. The only thing I really need right now is the timeline, the viewer, and the inspector. So now this clip, I cut that clip by mistake. Um, in my car. All right, so right there, I want to come back with this clip. Another Hollywood. Okay, and I want to move, I want to have this clip move too. So look at this, I can grab this and go like this. So here's what I'm going to do with this clip. I need to have it under there before the fade out starts. I can't bring it right to here or this will fade to black and then that'll come in suddenly. So you do have to drag it so it's underneath your fade. Doesn't matter where it is, but it's gotta be under there someplace. So on this one, I don't like the way it looks we're having this fade over the other one particularly. It's all right, but I have an option here. I can take that clip. I can also enlarge it. And I can move myself over to the other side of the screen. So let's do that and let's keyframe it. Let's hit those two diamonds, zoom and position. And when by the time this goes out, I'd like to be on the other side of the screen. So I'm going to take the X position and I'm going to move it over this way. Uh, how far can I go? I can go until, well, until I run out of, out of that frame. So I, could, I don't want to go that far, but I could go to there. And again, I'm going to come down here and move those keyframes to the end of the clip, or at least beyond my fade. I can see my fade up there. I want to get to the end of the fade. 
And I want to move this to the beginning of the fade. And now watch what happens. I spent last night half sleeping in my car. Another Hollywood night in the life of this big old track. All right, so for this one, I've got this long clip until the bass comes in. Again, let's take it. Let's just zoom in on me. I'm going to hit the two keyframes. I'm going to go to the end of it, see where I'm at at the end. Let's zoom, 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 zoom. Let's move it a little bit this way. Uh, let's move the bottom up a little bit so we see more of the guitar. And again, we'll do the same thing. We'll go over here. Just drag those clips to the end. And again, if we want it to start off slowly, show this, click that keyframe and make it exponential. And you've actually got handles here. You can actually kind of control all that. So let's see what that looks like now. Another Hollywood night in the life of this big old traveling star. So you see I screwed up there. Do you see you can see the bottom of the, uh, the bottom of it? So I kind of messed up the exposition on that. So I'm going to move that up a little bit. Another Hollywood night in the life of this big old traveling star. Truck stop shower is gonna have to do again. Tonight I might make 500 bucks or 10. Three months on. Okay. I hate the way that shot looks of me to, because I'm vain and I'm going to fix that shot because all I see is the top of my bald head. So I'm going to fix this shot by going to that clip. See, I just created a clip by blading it. So I'm not changing everything. I'm going to make it like this and I'm going to move the bottom up and focus more on the base. Three months on the road, and each one seems longer than the last. All right. That's great, Neil. Let's go to titling now. So now for titling, we need to go back to the effects library. We need to see this. The effects library is down here. And again, where you see these fusion titles, those are complex things. I don't know if you'll have them. There's plain text. Um, you just have to see what you're offered. But let's say you do get these options. There's all kinds of things here. Titling, you can, you can have crazy stuff. Here's one called title ripple text. I don't know what it is, but let's look at it. So. We've run out of tracks. I need, uh, I need another track because I want to put my title over my first clip. So again, control, add track. Now I've got another track. I'm going to take the title rise fade, whatever the hell that is, <clears throat> put it up here, highlight it. Okay, well, now we see what it is. It'll show you. It has a demo. Now, it runs jerky because that needs to be rendered. You see the blue line there and the red line? Right above the clip, it's showing you that right now your computer is trying to render that. And when it gets all blue, it should run fine. So let's say, yeah, I like that. Let's go over here. Uh, I, if I want to, what do I want to put? Uh, I want to put my name. Okay. I even want to misspell it correctly. Well, that's great. I don't like the font. There's all kinds of fonts you can pick. It's way too big. Let's go down here and make the font 
smaller, or up here rather, cool. Uh, I don't like where it's positioned. Somewhere in here, there's an X, Y. Uh, actually, you may have to go to video. See this tab next to Fusion? You can go to video, and these are your old friends, the zoom and position. So I could take this and drop it down, put it wherever I want it. Let's say I want it to be over to the left. And let's say the color is lousy. I go back to Fusion and come in here in color, and it's like, what do I want? I, I want... I want blue of my guitar. Well, that's cool, except now I can't see it because it's the blue of my guitar. <laughs> but if I hit motion blur, well, actually in this case, that's just a poor choice. I'm gonna pick a different color. Great. <laughs> And again, because I changed the parameters, it's rendering. You see the line along here. And in a minute, it'll happen. But let's say your computer's just choking. Just turn this off. You will now not see that title. That's a fusion title. You'll see a box where the title should have been. Your computer's not broken. It's just not playing it so that your computer will play. So. That's really it. Um, you now would go through the rest of the song, decide where your cuts are going to be, where your transitions, how you're going to move it. Uh, let's go back to timeline one here. This is the one I created yesterday. Uh, I am probably going to add the bass track that I did today to this, maybe. Uh, do some other things to it, and maybe I'll repost that whole video. Uh, again, but now that is because I didn't have the audio soloed. This is another thing. You can hit Command F, Command F, just like in QuickTime. You can see the whole thing full screen. I spent last night half sleeping. I can tell, however, that I've got some kind of other audio solo. I need to look at that, see what that's about. Hmm. Another Hollywood night in the life of this big old traveling star. I don't know. Oh, I'm overloading Zoom. I just turned it down. So anyway, there you go. Um, why don't we open it up to questions? Um, I will uh, I'll look at you all over here, and I'll just leave that up. Um, although I realize if I don't stop sharing it, nobody can see anybody. Um, oh, all right. Can you hear me? OK. Questions? Hillary. I was wondering, you made that video with so many different videos in one screen. How do you do that? Do you just layer them and then use the... Let's go back and I'll show you exactly how to do it. It's pretty easy, actually. Let's go back and look at this. Um, let's say I wanted... Let me go to my other timeline. Let's go back to the beginning of the song. Let's say I actually wanted to see all of these things at once. Drag this one back out, drag this one out. So I go to this clip and I go to zoom. I'm gonna make it small. Okay, and then I'm gonna move it, move it over here. Okay. But I don't like what's on the left there, particularly. I don't think that's very interesting like that. So I need to do some more here. 
go to cropping, double click the word cropping, which was right below the transform and crop the left and cool. So now I can come back and say, you know what? I could make that actually bigger now. Let's go back to my zoom again and go, okay, there we go. Now do the same thing with the clip below that. Go in, Zoom it down, move it over to the right. There, and I can make it bigger. Let's make it bigger. It's a cool program. Let's, and I just let's get rid of the left side of the screen now. I mean, the right side of the screen. And now I got this thing on the bottom. That's all entirely too big. So. Bring that in. So this becomes more like just scrapbooking. You just kind of figure out what you want to do. How many shots are you trying to show simultaneously? <clears throat> okay. Now, in order for that to work, you can decide which I need to get rid of. I need to get rid of all of that motion that I did. How do I do that real quickly? Um, I would go over here and just highlight it and reset. You see the little reverse arrow there? I'm going to reset all of the keyframes. Same thing on this one. Let's reset the keyframes in that clip. And the same thing on the bottom. Let's reset the keyframes. Now I'm gonna do what I just did again and they'll stay where I left them. Notice the cropping didn't change because I didn't reset the cropping. You see how you're just X, Y. Let's take, now let's take that clip. Let's bring it down in size, move it over to the right. You could crop the right, but I'm taking it off the screen, so I don't really need to. For the bottom one, bring it down in size. Maybe move it over a little bit this way. If we had another video, we could stick it in this hole. So that's how I got all of those on there. Let's look at that now. And again, solo the audio. Hey, Neil, I got a question. Yeah. Uh, can you put the, the images in front of each other, like layer? Like you could decide which one goes first in front. Yes, back. that's by the that's by the order of the track. That's that is uh, that's why you saw me moving a lot of the stuff out of the way. Whatever's on top is on top. So watch this. The top one is this one. If I take that. Also, there's another way you can move these two. Um, see right here, this drop down window? You can click that and get transform windows that allow you to move it without using those sliders. I've gotten used to using the sliders or resize it like that. But notice what's always going to be on top. It's going to be whatever of these is highlighted. So I can take this, notice this one's on top, so this one covers the other two. It's so much more interesting to watch a video where the camera is moving subtly. Um, that's why people spend money on these gimbals that let you handhold your camera without being all jerky and being able to move around and do shots. Yeah. Well, you can't do that if you're trying to make a video by yourself, but you can at least pan it in or zoom it in or you have it move left or right or whatever. I've gotten um, on some videos, I've actually created that whole gimbal effect by doing a lot of moving, like slightly in, slightly out moving. Yeah. In other words, you look at a thing, I've got like 20 keyframes on a clip and each of them are just a little bit different than the other one. So yeah. it looks like I was actually using a handheld camera. 
Yeah, or somebody is actually operating a camera besides. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, the ability to be able to do, you don't need, you, you, you need two cameras maybe to pull this off. Well, everyone's probably got two cameras. You know, one of the cameras, uh, one of the cameras is their phone. And if they've got a, any kind of a GoPro or anything, you could have a second camera of a wide shot of the room. It's just nice to have something else to cut away to. But say you don't have two cameras, in which case, then do it twice. Do your video with you singing and playing. Then add another guitar part. Sing a harmony. You know, just say you've got something else to, to go to. Yeah. The more shots, the better. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. No, this is, this is something you can't do on iMovie, really, is, is like that – no, most people are always asking me to do it so, so i knew trying to show this you know I, I tried to show it on sunday with the uh the weight video but that that you know that's not a, a beginner project there's a lot going on there too yeah. there's just so much content but if you know if, you know carl you do these multiple videos what are you using i've seen yeah. videos it's, it's all i movie so far i use what i have and it, you can use the ken burns effect where it does that slow you can choose how you zoom in and do all that but it is a it's limited two now. tracks it is very limited yeah, yeah so two. it's nice if you can do three tracks and four tracks and have oh god yes and, you know and i i have the i have this um, davinci resolve i'm looking at the welcome tour screen right now so a lot of these you're giving a lot of answers, and I'm not going to have the questions yet until I get the controls under my fingers. So I'm glad you're recording this because I'm going to go back for reference. Well, here's the thing. This is, you know, I'm not an expert on this program by any means. There are many, many videos on YouTube. Um, uh, oh, no, I was just going to call I, you. I, I look up stuff all the time. It's like, hey, I wonder if I can do that. And if you just know how to word a search, you can find a video. My suggestion is if you find a video – and you start and it makes no sense to you or the person's taking too long to get to the point or you don't understand them, just find another video because some people do this a lot better than others. And, uh, you know, I used an example the other day. Eric Schwartz said, okay, I got this green screen. How do you do green screen in Da Vinci? I said, I have no idea. So he said, I just watched a video. I have, still have no idea. I said, send me the link. I watched part of it and said, it's a terrible video. You know, in two minutes, I found a good video. I sent it back to him and said, here, watch this video. This guy actually is explaining it properly. You know. Yeah, the tutorials. How are you? Have you been making videos? Have you been doing any videos? I have not, and that's why I'm here, because I didn't know how to make them well. <laughs> yeah. But if you've got two iPhones, you're, you're good to go. Uh, if you've got a way to record audio, though, uh, that's another whole thing. I mean, but it's yeah. totally yeah. singing to a microphone. Um, it's just going to sound so much better than a microphone that's six or eight feet away from you and not a very good microphone at that. Yeah. So are we done? Anything else? Where do we find this video later? When I have the questions uh, I under my fingers? It, I would, I'm going to edit it if it's got garbage in it, and, and uh, I'll put it up on my Facebook page, I guess. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Anyway, hope, I hope it's <laughs> nice for all your videos. Okay. Thank you, Neil. All right. Thank you, Neil. Thanks, Neil. Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Good job. Thank you so much. That was awesome. You were quite welcome. Bye, guys. Stay safe. Yep. Bye.